Good morning and welcome to the service with a difference. It is the 25th of February 2024. We are in the season of Lent and we are looking this Lent at how um, we know that sin is addictive and as those who are addicted to sin, as those who are under the control of so many things in our life that are not holy and, and pleasing and good, um, we, we need God's help in rehabilitation. Um, and so we are on the journey this season of Lent through a process of rehabilitation. We are asking God to search our hearts and to, to bring out everything from within us that is not of God, that is not holy, that is not loving, and to fill us um, with everything that is holy, that is loving, that is that is of God. Um, and so we looked Ash Wednesday at how God shows us the problem. He says, here's the problem. Um, and then on Sunday, we looked at how when we know there's a problem, if we are going to go on the journey of rehab, if we're going to go on the journey of renewal, um, of, of restoration, then we have to face, we've got to face the problem. Um, and today we are looking at overcoming the obstacles that happen on the way of us going through this process of rehabilitation, this process of restoration, um, being restored to a good relationship with ourselves, with other people and, and with God, um, and being renewed into something much more than we were before we were addicted to whatever that sin is, to whatever that substance is, to whatever that, that behavior is. Um, today we are reading from Genesis chapter 17. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 7 and from verse 15 to verse 16. Um, God has called Abraham. Abraham has followed God. And at this point in the conversation, God changes Abraham's name to Abraham and Sarai's name to, to Sarah, um, meaning Abraham has given himself to God because you can only name something when it belongs to you. Abraham said, well, then I am yours. Do with me as you need to do with me. Um, do through me whatever you need to, to do through me. And so God gives him a new name and he changes his name from esteemed father to the father of nations. And so it's not really a change, but he just adds more to, to, to what Abraham's name is he completes Abraham's name, in other words. Um, and then we're going to be reading from Psalm 22. We're going to read from verse 23 to verse 32. Um, with the psalmist is writing, those those who love God should should praise God because God is is worthy of praise. Everybody um, who who is obedient to God will will have enough. Um, the poor will have enough. The the rich will have enough. Everybody will have enough because in God there is always always enough. Um, and, and if we are faithful to God, then the nations that surround us and, and the future generations, they're all going to come to testify to the faithfulness of God um, in the lives of those who are obedient to God, not because it's a reward, but because we are going where God is leading us and God only leads to, to enough places where, where there is enough for all of us. And then we're going to be reading from Romans chapter four. We're going to read from verse 13 through to verse 25. Um, the writer to the people of Rome um, is saying and remembering Rome is a mixed congregation. The church in Rome is a mixed congregation, Gentiles and Jews. Um, and the Jews are asking the, the, the Gentiles to, to follow the law. And, and the writer is saying, but we are, we are heirs of Abraham, not heirs because of blood, heirs because we are faithful as Abraham is faithful. Abraham was called considered righteous because he trusted God, not because he obeyed the law. The law wasn't there yet. And so so Abraham is righteous because he trusted God. And so those of us who, who trust God are righteous because we we trust we trust God. Um, and then we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 8. We're going to read from verse 31 to verse 38. Um, Jesus has just asked the disciples, who do you say I am? Peter says, you're the Messiah. And then Jesus predicts his death for the first time. Peter obviously resists it, and Jesus has to rebuke, rebuke Peter. Again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as you read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. And so as we look in the season of Lent at how all of us um, need to be rehabilitated, God created something beautiful, something went wrong, and that needs to be repaired. We need to be rehabilitated to what God created us to be. Um, the journey of holiness 
in, in, in the language of the church, we are going on to sanctification. That is the process of, of rehabilitation. But, but you'll know that in order to go on this process of rehabilitation, in order to go on this journey of restoration, um, even before we step out into the wilderness and as well as throughout our journey, in the wilderness, throughout the journey of, 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 of restoration, there, there are going to need to be certain interventions in place. And those interventions are there in order to help us overcome the resistance that exists um, on the journey of renewal. And there will always be resistance to, to renewal. The first intervention that comes in our journey of overcoming resistance to renewal um, is where God points out that there is a problem. Ash Wednesday, we looked at God saying to us, here's a problem. And he normally uses other people to, to say that because um, especially if we, we know that we're doing something wrong, we turn a deaf ear to what, what God is saying. And so God needs to use other people to, to say to us, listen, stop. You need to stop because yeah, he has a problem. He has an, an area of concern in, in your life that you might want to reconsider. And so as we go on to that journey, as we enter into the wilderness, as we face the problem, there are going to be many moments where we want to stop and, and turn back, um, where we want to just give up the journey of, of growth. And so we need people around us who are going to help us overcome those moments of resistance on our journey of growth. Um, and anyone who has been to rehab out of their own choice, they will have gone to rehab because they have been shown how everything around them has fallen apart. And so they've had um, what you would call, I guess, a wake-up call. Um, and another word for a wake-up call is a crisis of faith. You know, they, they, they're going to need people in those moments where they question life, where they question themselves, where they question God, their relationship with God, their relationship with other people, where they question everything. That's a, that's a crisis of faith. And we all go through crises of faith. Um, we have to go through crises of faith. Otherwise, we would never mature in our relationship with God. So even if you've been faithful to God from infancy all the way till, till old age, you would have gone through many crises of faith as you have matured in your faith, as you matured in your understanding of who you are, of who God is, of your relationship to God, um, of your relationship to the world, to the world around you. And so when we go through this moment where we experience this crisis of faith, where we are asking these questions, where we go through this moment where we, we have this wake up call, um, we need, we need people who are going to surround us. We need people who are going to keep us safe as we learn how to control that area of our lives. Um, last week, Jesus, on Sunday, we, we looked at how Jesus was going into the wilderness. In the wilderness, there were the wild animals, those who who rejected um, this process of renewal. And there were the angels, those who supported um, Jesus in his time of fasting. Um, there are angels who surround us, people who surround us in, in, in our times of renewal as we let go of that which is not God and embrace that which is God as we let go of those things in our lives that have got control over us. Um, and, and you will know that in extreme cases, especially interventions are, are often most effective when they are done by an external person, by an outside professional. You know, so, so when we offer our lives to God, as Abraham did, when we offer our lives to God and we, and we ask God to help us love God better, when we ask God to help us love ourselves better, when we ask God to help us love others better, who better to be a part of the team that surrounds us than, than the professional who created us? Who better to be a part of that team than the one who is within us and knows us intimately, the one who is separate from us enough to be able to speak healing into our lives? in the same way that he spoke all of all of life into into existence. And so when we give ourselves to God, there is a lot of resistance we face from from ourselves, from the world around us. And we need God's help to overcome all of that resistance as we go on to maturity, as we go on to holiness, as we go on to sanctification, as we learn how to love as God loves. And so again, the first place God says, here's a problem, wake up call, the crisis of faith. Um, and, and I think for us, with regards to addictions and, and things in our life that we, we should know is a problem, is, is when we speak the words, I can give up any time I like. Um, if we hear those words coming out of our mouths, then, then we know that there is a problem. If we hear those words coming out of our mouth, 
we know we we need help because those words are often spoken right before the fall of of many who who thought that they could heal themselves when they believed the time was right you know these words when we hear them coming out of our mouth it it should be a warning for us that there is a problem and we and we need help um somebody needs to help convince us of the damage that our behavior is causing and and that help is not going to come from within you know there is not much chance that we are going to overcome the initial resistance to renewal on on our own um and you will also know that very little can be done when when we are convinced that we can fix the problem on our own and so when we hear the words i can give up any time i like it should be a warning for us to say you need help and the help is probably not going to come from from within you you're going to need external help you need somebody who's going to journey with you you need to be asking god to help you on this journey of renewal of restoration and hopefully you know when 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 something happens or or when somebody says something we will be aware enough of ourselves and what's going on within us to realize that we are out of control and we will be forced in that moment then to question who we are what we believe um, what we believe about god about life about, our, about ourselves we will be forced into this crisis of faith um and and the wake up call this crisis of faith could be could be precipitated by by anything it, it could be because of death or illness or unemployment it could be because we have lost our temper um it could be because a friend is challenging us about our behavior or about our our attitudes um and and we all have behaviors you will know we all have behaviors that are destructive um there are certain situations um for me that bring out unhelpful speech and 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 you can be sure that those conversations that take place are not going to be healing conversations and and it's often in moments like this that that someone has to call me out in a way that i will receive their words and and seriously consider the place that my life is headed towards um Peter in 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 the gospel reading from today he is on top of the world you know the miracles of healing that he has been a part of he 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 has even done some himself by now um the feeding of the 5000 the feeding of the 4000 the casting out of the demons um the the standing behind Jesus as a skirt as Jesus teaches with authority and he and he puts the religious leaders in their place you know for Peter Peter, everything is going well. He even got the, the the answer right when Jesus asked him, "Who do you say I am?" And Peter said, "You're the Messiah." And Jesus said, "You you you're right." And so, so in Peter's mind, everything is going well for Peter. You know, nothing can touch him because he is with Jesus. And so, when Jesus predicts his death, um, naturally Peter's first instinct is is to rebuke Jesus, is to correct Jesus. because in in Peter's mind this this is exactly the right place for for him to be and and he doesn't want anything to interfere with the way that things are are now he wants to keep it exactly as it is he he is not willing to see the truth of what is happening because he wants it to stay as it is in in his mind and so this becomes an obstacle for Peter that becomes an obstacle of letting go of his own way of thinking and embracing the way that God is thinking that's why Jesus says to him you don't have in mind the things of God but you've got in mind the things of man you you're worried about what you want instead of what God needs you're worried about what what you think should be happening instead of concerning yourself with what God knows needs to to be happening and so Jesus has to correct Peter um as he helps Peter over this obstacle this moment of resisting the journey of growth that Peter is is still on Peter thinks he has finished the journey of growth and Jesus is saying no there is still so much more that needs to to take place um but in the story Peter is not the only one who is facing an obstacle um Jesus is also facing an obstacle because because the things that Peter is is saying um is a part of Jesus's temptation when 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 peter says you will never die we want to allow you to die jesus jesus wants those words to to be true he doesn't want to die he wants what peter is saying to to be to be true and so peter's words are the temptation that jesus is facing and so peter is unknowingly and and with good intentions helping jesus to justify disobedience to god 
thank heavens in this moment Jesus has the strength of will and the foresight to to see it for what it is and so he rebukes Peter and he and he forces Peter into a crisis of faith he says to Peter you don't have in mind the things of God you have in mind the things of of man and Peter is now forced to consider Jesus's words and this is one of the wake-up calls that would begin Peter's journey of seriously considering his life and his call. It's, it's the one that would, would result in his, in his restoration. Um, when he denies Jesus, Jesus welcomes his back. This, this is one of those moments that, that remind him that he is on a journey. He is not there. He has not finished maturing in his relationship with God. But his journey of learning and growing and developing, his journey of renewal is, is ongoing and and he knows, even in that moment of restoration, that he has not finished that journey. And so it is, it is this conversation that I want to say is really the, the source and, and the beginning of his bold preaching on Pentecost. And it's the beginning of his call to, to head up the, the, the early church. And so Peter needs to go on this journey of, of renewal. But there are so many obstacles that get in the way of Peter's journey. And often Peter is the, is the biggest obstacle on his journey of maturing. As with all of us, we, we're the biggest obstacle we will ever face on our journey of maturing in, in, our, in our love for God and our love for, for others. And so we are reminded that, that the fasting we do during Lent is, is nothing more than an act of, of self-control. And so again, just I want you to think of those areas in your life that you have no control over. All sin is, is addictive. You know, all behavior that seems to be outside of our control or all behavior that has us going out of control is behavior that has mastered us rather than we have mastered that behavior. That behavior has mastered us and, and it controls us. And so Lent is the season in which we take back control of, of our lives. And rehabilitation is the process we go through to learn self-control. And, and in this work, there is absolutely no doubt that we need God's help. Um, we need the Holy Spirit to surround us. We, we need God to work through the people that surround us in order to take us on the process of rehabilitation and to keep us on the journey of rehabilitation. And so for all of us, God says to us, listen, there's, there's a problem. And, and that is... That is the first intervention we get in terms of overcoming that initial resistance to renewal. And, and, that, and that's normally accompanied, as we said last week, by this experience of, of pain, you know, where, where we become fully aware of the damage that is caused by our sin, by our addiction, by our, our behaviors, by our attitudes, all those things we are clinging to that are, that are not of God. And, and it comes with a sense of, of hurt and, and desolation. But after the, the pain and the desolation of the initial wake-up call has passed, the temptation will be very strong for all of us to return to the addictive behavior or the sin or, or the substance. Um, the, the temptation is going to be very strong for all of us to justify the sin that we, we struggled to, to give up. And this is why ongoing help is vital. This is why ongoing intervention is vital in our journey of rehabilitation. Um, and think, think of your own journey of faith. How easy has it been for you to come face to face with yourself and 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 then let go of yourself as the center of the universe and allow and allow Christ to take His place in the center of your world, in the center of of your life. And and this is what Jesus' teaching was about as he continued to teach Peter and all who were listening. Um, he says, if you want me to be the center of your life, if you want to be holy as God is holy, then then this is the path you need to follow. Um, in other words, you, you need to deny yourself. You need to pick up your cross. You you need to you need to follow me. Um, and 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 when an addict agrees to go into rehab, it means they are agreeing to do what they are going to be told. You know, they are saying that during the healing process, they will submit to the rehabilitation process, even though they know that they are going to kick against it with every fiber of their body. And they are going to kick against it with every fiber of their body. We all kick against renewal. We all kick against um, transformation that takes place within our life as we mature in faith, as we learn how to love as God loves. In fact, the whole process of rehabilitation is designed around the fact that there is a very strong possibility that you will be your own worst enemy in this process. You will, you will justify, you will, you will long for the old ways, you will resist and you will resist and, and you will resist again. And so denying yourself is never ever going to be easy. 
Um, but sometimes we, we need to submit to those who are helping us because we are made aware that our judgment is clouded. It's clouded by our emotions. It's clouded by our desires. It's clouded by our lusts. It's clouded by our anger. It's clouded by our, our temptation. And, and just to illustrate this, um, and, and it's a specific story, but, it, but it's a general truth. Uh, I, I once had a conversation with somebody who was in prison after they had been arrested for shoplifting. Um, and, and before that, they had gone on this very long journey of rehab. They were rehabbing from tick, from meth, um, and they'd been clean for, for a number of years. In, you know, they got their life together. They got themselves a job. They, they fell in love. They got married. They, they had a child. They had a house. Um, they had everything, and then they started to use tick again, and and they lost everything. You know, lost their family, they they lost their house, they lost their job, they lost their car, and now they were sitting in prison. And so I asked them if they wanted to stop using tick, and and they were honest enough with me to say no. You know, they didn't want to give it up because they they would miss the clarity of of mind that they had while they were using the drug. Before the drug, they, they had everything. And after the drug, they had lost everything in a state that, according to them, was a clear mind. And, and so surely what seemed to be a clear mind to, to them was not very clear at all. And, and there is so much I think you and I think is, is clear, but is clearly not that clear after all. When somebody goes into rehab and they, and they submit to the person who will take them on the journey of healing, they do that knowing that the person will take them on, on a good journey of rehabilitation. You know, when we give our lives to Christ, when we submit ourselves to Christ, we do it knowing that the path that Christ will lead us down, that God will lead us down, is a good path. It's a path that, that leads to life. There is, there is nothing false. There is nothing deceptive. There is, there is nothing bad about the path that God is going to lead us down. It is, it is always going to be leading us towards life. And so we submit ourselves gladly to the one who will lead us perfectly. And so Jesus' call to, to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross and to follow him, is, is all about submitting to, to Christ. You know, we're giving up our need to be in the right. We're, we're giving up our fear that if we stop what we are doing, then it's all going to fall apart. And it might fall apart, but it won't fall apart for long. If it falls apart, it was because it was always going to fall apart. Um, and so submitting to Christ means we are giving up our need to take responsibility for, for other people's lives at the expense of, of our own life. It is about us being open to Christ's intervention, even though we might kick against it with every fiber of, of our body. And, and the chances are we will kick against it with every fiber of, of our body. You know, the alternative to, to receiving God's intervention in, in our lives is, is that when we refuse God's help because we want to be in, in charge of our life, Jesus says, you know, if you, if you love your life, you, you're going to lose it. In other words, if you want to be in charge of your own life, you're going to lose your life. Um, because being in charge of my own life often means that I am being controlled by something else that is imperfect. Even if I am in control of my own life, even if I am doing it my way, my way is, is imperfect. And so when I submit myself to God, then it is always perfect. It is always good. It is always the most loving thing to do. And so when we refuse to open our eyes to our sin, when we refuse to open our eyes to our rebellion, we, we slowly die a spiritual death as we build the wall that we have built between God and us higher and higher and higher. And so we, we turn from God because we will not face the sin that he, he points out. We turn from the church, from his family, because we will not face the sin. That God is pointing out in our lives and, and we end up blaming God. We end up blaming the church when, when our lives are falling apart. And so instead of taking the responsibility for our lives and, and allowing God to convict us of our sin, instead of, instead of allowing God to intervene and admitting to God and to others that, that we, we need help, we just, we just continue down the path of, of destruction. And we, and we use all of our energy looking for somebody to, to blame for everything that is happening in our lives, for the destruction that is taking place around us. God intervenes because he can't let us die. You know, he can't stand by and let us live half lives. And, and so really, I want to ask you, will you, will you allow yourself to spend time in silence as you, as you give God an opportunity to speak to you? Have a conversation with God, not a conversation where you are talking, but a conversation where you are listening um, to what God is convicting 
you are. And while you have that conversation, trust trust that God will not only convict you of his love, but that he will also convict you of everything that is preventing you from experiencing the healing that is found in his lovers, as well as the rebellion within you that prevents you from loving others as God loves you. And so I just I want you to invite you today just to a space of, of silent prayer, silent listening, just a space of repentance, asking God, please reveal um, everything within me that is not of you so that I may repent of it, so that I may let it go and so that, it, so that I can ask you for help to go on this journey of renewal, this journey of rehabilitation, this journey of healing. And so I'm going to begin with a prayer and then I just, after the prayer, spend, spend time in silence, meet, meet with God. Let's pray. And so, Lord God, we ask that you would help us to be silent before you. And, and in that silence, we ask that you would help us to dwell in the depths of your healing love. And that we would know you you taking us on a journey of rehabilitation. As you help us overcome every obstacle that stands in the way of us being set free to, to love in the same way that you love. And so, Lord God, speak. Speak into our hearts. Speak into our minds. Speak into our spirits now as we just be silent before you.